We have just talked about what drives and will drive growth in the Bahamas this year and over the near future. And now I would like to talk about uh, what the Bahamas has to offer that others don't, uh, Tanya. Right. Well, certainly when we look at the Bahamas, this sort of carries over from our first segment. When we talk about the Bahamas Advantage, it's really about our private wealth management pedigree and the experience and skill that we have as it relates to international financial services. We have a long history in this business. Um, we have a long history of being a responsible international player. And I think certainly our expertise as it relates to private wealth management is what makes us stand apart from the competition. Competition is <laughs> tough though, isn't it? Competition is there tough, are many centers with lots of ambition and, and funding. Um, what do you think will, uh, will attract investment from abroad in the future? I think, well, apart from um, attracting investment from mm -hmm. abroad in the future, when we talk about competition being stuff, I think we're tough, we're still able to differentiate ourselves from other jurisdictions. Like I said, um, when we look at the trust product in mm -hmm. particular, and later on we'll talk about innovation, but we have a very, I want to say, well-developed trust sector. Um, when we introduced our legislation in 1998, it was pioneering such that other jurisdictions took it up and followed suit. So the expertise in that area certainly sets us apart from the, um, from the competition that's out there. I think our skilled labor force, I think the suite of products, because we don't only talk about the trust sector, but we have the other antecedent product, products that go along with it in terms of providing full business solutions for clients. That is what sets us apart. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Now, uh, I know that the word offshore is very much disliked here as it is in other centers. Uh, why and how would you like to be seen and defined? Well, okay, I'll see if we take that from a legal perspective. I mean, mm -hmm. what we're really talking about here is aggregating client funds in the Bahamas, which then go and connect, inter interconnect into investments either in portfolio investments in the capital markets onshore, or they're going to be actually directed into private equity funds, and they're going to be invested in private equity investments in, in the onshore, onshore world. If you want to contrast onshore, offshore. So, the idea that the Bahamas is just a, a, a black hole for, for offshore deposits is just not correct because everything that comes through here ends up going back into mainland uh, onshore markets. So, and, you know, the Bahamas, when I mean, we were focusing on the, the Latin America as our main, mo for most, client, most operations here, mm -hmm. Latin America is a very important market. So I think there's a natural tendency for offshore center, international centers to focus on particular areas. You can look at the Jersey, Channel Island ones, they're looking at Europe. The Bahamas, we're looking to Latin America, and also more importantly now, perhaps, we're looking out over to Asia. So there's this natural gravitation to where your client base is going to be. And I think it's a, um, our advantage is that we've competitively shown since the, the 50s that private banking, private wealth management, trust services is something the Bahamas does very well, and I think we'll continue to do that very well. And I think that you'll see, you're seeing uh, international banks uh, that are consolidating or rationalizing their business lines, they look to the Bahamas as a trust center. It may not be a booking center, but it's a trust center. Okay. So you look so at the way they look, yeah. so you're seeing the way that the, the, the uh, global players are positioning themselves in the region, the local players are coming in and taking up space that some of them have vacated. It's, it's an advantage I think the Bahamas has, and it's a compelling, compelling business argument going forward, and I think it will continue to do so. Uh, what elements of uh, transparency, compliance with international tax rules um, that perhaps you would like to highlight now? And I'm talking to, it's a question open to, uh, to all of you. So how important is it to, to show that uh, you run businesses that are, trans that are transparent, that you know your customers and so on? Well, I, th I think it's Im Im embedded in our, in our strong regulatory framework. I mean, um, the, the regulation is there f uh, to work in a transparent and compliant environment. Um, I think that's one of our, our advantage. We have a very strong regulatory um, framework, um, good good sort of regulators um, on, that, on that body side. We also have good infrastructure. Um, we have big support from top tier banks um, who are based here, particularly doing wealth management, as has been mentioned before. And I think that we have very good service providers on the on the accountancy side, on the legal practice side. And also on the trust, trust and, and accounting and, and back office um, side. 
So, I mean, I, I don't think um, sort of we are we are competing on a, on a, on the basis of of under regulation. I think the other way around. I think we are in in certain aspects um, highly regulated as compared to developed nations, uh, in particular on KYC and all your customer. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is um, recognized in the international community? <laughs> You, you yeah. can, well, no, my, my, my quick answer is, is no, and I think further work has to be done from our part to make sure that people understand um, the relative fr framework that we, we're living here. Um, I think the perception is that, the, the perception is that um, um, it's not recognized, but when you look at, um, say, an objective standard like the FA, recent FATF review, I think the Bahamas scores uh, very highly, and, um, and it's certainly um, a review that most people should look at if there is a question for them. Um, to echo what, uh, what Yvonne said, the regulatory framework uh, is very strong, but it really comes down to the practice of the individual players and when you know, we all know each other very well, we know the type of business that each of us does and um, it comes down to that practice and I think we are all um, mindful and knowledgeable that um, the world is a transparent place and that is the business that we uh, were engaged in. Um, we are uh, every day moving toward a more global um, competitive marketplace and um, to be competitive in that global marketplace we have to be innovative we have to be you know thoughtful and um, and bespoke in our products as as Michael said earlier um, but we also have to be um, you know uh, good citizens let's say of the financial marketplace globally yeah. and I think what going following on from David's point I think what's frustrating for us in the Bahamas is that we we meet all the expectations expected of us mm -hmm. We commit to international transparency. We commit to the AML regimes. We commit to CRS. And then you have Brussels come out and put us on an arbitrary yeah. list. Okay. Where in this is capricious. It's disingenuous. Because even then, even when that happened, you have the OECD coming out and saying, that's not right. That's right. So you're, you're, you're in this sort of never, never land where you're dealing with the international organizations that everyone is expected to deal with but then you've got political drivers in Europe or el elsewhere that have a different agenda. So there has to be, if you want the respect of rule of law on both sides, they need to respect it just as much as you expect us to respect it. And I mean, speaking from my experience dealing with uh, institutions, I mean, they put a lot of effort into, into compliance and KYC and, and, uh, and as David pointed out, the FATF review bore that out. CRS and common reporting standards going forward, we've laid our position out. And, that sh and we're no different from every other jurisdiction that's agreed to it. It's a prerequisite now to do business. We all recognize that. So now it's a question of, okay, how do we play in, the, in that new environment? And I think we're in a very good position to do that. And we've, and we've, been, pro and we've been proactive, actually, I mm -hmm. believe, uh, as compared to, to many jurisdictions, because, I mean, we have fully implemented FACA, um, that intergovernmental agreement with the United States. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we, we've, we've been able to do it and do it in a very timely way. And um, I think I think we're not celebrated enough for the for the um, for the gains that we have made over the time in actually responding to these regulatory obligations under the international agreement. So um, I think, uh, like as as um, was indicated, we need to be able to go out and actually spread the word a bit more as to it's how compliant we truly are. Link. Yes, we have oh, to communicate. They listen yes. to yes. Assuming yeah. they want to listen. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Evelyn, how frustrated are you about the state of... I'm, I'm not frustrated at all. I do a lot of um, business development and mm -hmm. I uh, attend a lot of conferences and seminars and I feel that the Bahamas does have a very good reputation as an international financial center. Certainly the intermediaries that I deal with are interested. We're doing business and um, it's compliant business. We wouldn't have it any other way. Our regulators, they are progressive. And um, I feel that the Bahamas has made very good strides with implementing all of the things that was required of us, such as mm -hmm. FATCA, right. over 30 tiers, yes, is it? Over 30 tiers. And um, we're, we're not shy of being a responsible um, citizen of the world. So perhaps for, for the ones in the know, um, your efforts are being recognized and yes. ma perhaps outside of that. I, of I that. travel a lot. I do go out and mm -hmm. 
and, and, and meet people. And so. a, a key yeah. part of the work that BFSB does is to promote the Bahamas as a responsible mm -hmm. international player. Um, I'd say 50% of my mandate, perhaps more, has to do with promotion. Yeah. And not only promotion of products and services, but of the jurisdiction and speaking about what the Bahamas advantage is. So that's a key function of the Bahamas Financial Services Board and we're supported by the government um, in that effort. Very good. So this is a, a good ending to our second chapter and now I feel we're ready to talk about innovation. Thank you.